Collingwood College science teacher Teresa Bennett is setting up her year nine class for a debate on stem cell technology and the use of human embryos. They'll be focusing on emerging scientific knowledge and developing ethical issues, well outside the comfort zone for the average science lesson. But first, there's the more mundane issue of who sits where. I want sat with you, Cheyenne. Why is this such an issue? If you ask children to group themselves, they'll sit in their friendship groups. If you have some very strong characters, they often congregate together, likes attract like. In um, my group today, I put in every group one very strong personality amongst quieter children. Whatever way, don't let the children sit through their own choice because I don't think it would work so well. This morning's lesson is on the topic of stem cell research. In a sense, you could call it bioethics. Assessing Teresa's stem cell discussion is education expert Ralph Levinson. The central core of this lesson um, on stem cell research was about, essentially revolved around the question, is the embryo a person yes. or not? But you're dealing with very strong ethical issues here. Um, as a science teacher, that's quite deep water, isn't mm, it, very to be deep in? Water, very deep water. Before Teresa's brood can take to that deep water, she needs to make sure they're familiar with the territory. So what I want to do today, in the first few minutes anyway, is to try and clarify for you what stem cells are and what the questions are that you should be asking yourself. How do I feel about this? I was very impressed with the fact that the, the children came into the room not having a clue what stem cells were about, that they were very interested and absorbed, but more than that, um, took it that little bit further and started to question and um, be critical of what they were hearing. First of all, what do you know about these particular diseases? Do you know anything about these diseases? Parkinson's? Multiple sclerosis, stroke, Michael. Muhammad Ali had Parkinson's disease and still does. What do you know about the um, symptoms of that disease, Michael? Um, it's, it makes you shake quite a bit. There are other famous personalities, I think, who've suffered from Parkinson's, aren't there? Yes, James. Michael J. Fox. Correct. Famous case there. How old was Michael J. Fox, or is Michael J. Fox? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but he's quite young. He's very young, isn't he? And yet he still <coughs> suffers from Parkinson's. Now, there is no cure. In fact, all these diseases up on the board, there is no cure. I think the way she set up the idea of what the problem was going to be was really excellent. I, I thought that was stunning, because she went through the, the, uh, the conditions. And what happened is she said, now, you know, these are not curable. Here is a problem, and of course that naturally leads into the whole idea of stem cell research. I thought that was really, really good and set up the problem quite nicely. Any more of those diseases that you see on the board? Multiple sclerosis? Um, yes. My granddad had a stroke and it's um, paralysed the left side of his body. Uh, I can't remember how it's caused, but is it something to do with the brain? Yes, what happens often in a stroke, and I'm no doctor, is often the part of the brain tissue is damaged, which means the actual motor function or other parts, speech for instance, can be badly affected. So let's stop there. What I will say though is the reason people are suffering is because there are certain cells in their body which aren't functioning properly, which have been destroyed and are not being replaced. So there is no cure, but maybe stem cells hold the answer. So what are stem cells? Are they a miracle? All those diseases we've talked about, I think we've all been touched by them in our lives. So far, so good. The lesson is shaping up nicely. But now Teresa has to negotiate the tricky area of where stem cells come from. There is an outer cell layer and an inner cell layer. So already there is a change taking place. Some cells are slightly different from others. More and more divisions take place. You all know about cell division. You all understand that, don't you? At the um, gastrula level, you have three layers. 
you have the inner endoderm, a middle layer called a mesoderm, and an ectoderm. They're going to go on to form different organs depending on which layer they're in, and it's, it's labelled. I think perhaps the explanation of the science was far too complex at some stages, and I think she possibly assumed far too much about what they actually knew about stem cell research. Certainly some of the term terminology was complicated. And I think at the end, I would have used questions to clarify what they understood. I think she tended to assume and said, you're all nodding and understanding. I'm not so sure. And I think the other thing I would have done is use perhaps simpler visuals with the idea of stem cell research so they could see very clearly what it is, what the process was happening stage by stage. Um, I think I wouldn't, I would expect that there are quite a few here who are not really quite clear how stem cell research does impact into the kind of problems that they're talking about. There was a lot of information. I think the beauty of having a whiteboard and be able to use PowerPoint makes it so much easier to deliver a lot of information quite concisely. Um, the children have the ability to absorb that information. I didn't feel at any point that I was giving them too much information too fast. In the old days, if I'd had to do that same task using an ordinary whiteboard and pieces of paper, Yes, it would have been quite difficult, but I think the beauty of new technology is it keeps it clean, it keeps it succinct um, with the bullet points and so on. And I have no doubt that they, they were all understanding, certainly the majority, what was being taught them. In fact, when they started to talk about it later, it's quite obvious they'd understood. Let's go on to talk about your task today then. Right, you are already in your groups of six people in each group. And I am going to give you um, a character. Teresa moves on to the group work part of the lesson. She wants the students to consider the different moral and ethical stances on stem cell research and to ensure that they keep an open mind and don't just put forward their own views. She assigns each group a different character. Davina Allison. She is anti-stem cell research. She has herself got a degenerative disease. So this is an interesting slant on it, isn't it? She is a wheelchair user with more than one medical condition. And potentially, stem cell research could help improve her life. She realizes it's a long way off. She would welcome stem cell treatment, but not if it involved use of embryonic stem cells. Yeah, we need to explain that there are other things, that we won't just be sticking to one way of getting the stem cells. There are other ways. She's not changing to do with the, the moral factors. She's changing to do with what will get the job done. Yes, I know, but somebody is going to come and say that it's immoral, so we need to say that there are other solutions we can be looking at. An adult or an embryo, so basically a pre-born baby or an adult, it doesn't matter. So she doesn't, and we've got to get into this character, not our own. So what we've got to be, we've got to seem almost heartless, as in an embryo doesn't really mean anything, and we can use whatever we need to take the job done. Not, well, we can use well, an embryo, but we won't change our mind. Oh, it's incredibly dynamic. Um, at the moment, they're trying to work out um, whether they should, as far as I can gauge from what they're saying, because there are lots of complexities in what's going on, whether the, um, they should take on board views of other people in order to strengthen the argument of the professor, or whether they just need to argue, you know, that particular case. Um, and they're so involved, you know, and, and I think they, you know, within the complexity, there's a complexity, and they're really trying to sort that out and to find out what's going on. And um, the extent to which they're engaged already is, is excellent. And even those who aren't speaking so much are clearly listening and taking part in what's going on. You can just tell by their body language. I had to depersonalise it. Um, when I gave them the activity, they were given a persona, a character, as a group to take on. And that made it a lot easier because although they could read about the facts and, and take on the hat of that per person and um, put forward the arguments for that person, it wasn't personal to them. Um, I do kind of enjoy 
debating and arguing my point because it's also I also feel it's good to kind of see other people's points of view and that also might might make me change my own ideas in some ways so I do kind of like a more active discussion lesson. Working with my group I find that James is very strong in the sense that he is acting as the character not as himself so I have the chance to say to him um, what my views are and he will find a way to slot it in um, to use um, in our argument for stem cell research and yet we're saying that some people are against it so I think that myself and others we were we both had strong points and I believe that they may have taken some of my points into view but also I took in some of their valid points so it's kind of an exchange of ideas and that sort of thing I am for stem cell research um, but I think that it can't be abused. Um, people who um, are researching it, they need to look at all other possibilities before they start using embryos and things like that. They need to basically use up every other possibility. The character that was um, given to Natasha's group was um, for a pro-stem cell research lobbyist. Natasha had had personal experience of an auntie who suffers from a, a disability of the nervous system. So she took it on quite passionately. If I was able to reteach that lesson, what I would enjoy doing is uh, making Natasha put on the hat of somebody who is actually anti-stem cell research. The group work culminates in students presenting their arguments for or against embryonic stem cell research still in character, with some interesting outcomes. Good morning. My fellow students, Mrs. Bennett, and the camera crew. My name is Jonathan Devere II. I'm a scientist working for the Outer Mongolian Secret Spy Service. When you have a comedian like Michael, I would hate to suppress a personality like that. And there is a place for a little light relief. But as an experienced teacher, you have to know when to go, shh, enough. And if the children respect you, they will quieten down again. But you have to be very careful to limit that um, tomfoolery. Who will give you the more sensible section of our school. <laughs> Later on, though, at the very end, they were allowed to put forward their views. But what was very interesting is a lot of them weren't quite clear in their own minds what they thought. It's not really alive, it's just like a bunch of cells, really, to start with, so... I don't think you can compare that to someone who's asleep because they're actually living and alive. Ivan, aren't we all just a bundle of cells? Mm. How would you like it if when you were an embryo or a fetus you had stuff taken away and then someone said, oh, it doesn't matter because Ivan's only a bunch of cells? I wouldn't be called Ivan at that stage, and also, <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything about it. I do strongly believe that this type of bioethics, um, the, the morality of certain science technologies, should be considered in any child's education. Where it comes in, whether it comes in in the science lab, or in the RE classroom, English lessons, doesn't really matter, does it? But I do believe we would do our children a disservice if they left school at whatever age, not having had the opportunity to consider these issues.